She stood and bowed to her father. Everyone else tried to bow as well. She spoke to her father in English. Our time is short and we have a question for you. Introduce me first and I will help, Shogun said. These are my teammates. Dark Speed is leader, Olympian hitter, Midas anchor, Bioforce healer, and Virtuoso brain. This is my father, Shogun, leader of the Tokyo team. Olympian stepped up and spoke for the team. It's a real privilege for all of us to meet you, sir. Thank you. I hope I can answer your question. Please sit. She explained quickly and completely the session that they had just had with Connors. Then she asked if her father could please help them find the answer that their coach was looking for. Connors is right. Each of you will have your own answer, your own reason for becoming heroes. I can't begin to know what the six of you will come to know as your strength. But if you would like, I can give you my answer. I think it would be very helpful to hear a correct reason, sir, Darkspeed said. Dr. Noguchi came in with tea and small rice cookies. Shogun was quiet while she served everyone. Thanks to the advice shared earlier, everyone was properly thankful for the gifts. When Dr. Noguchi was done serving, she left the room. Very well then, here's my answer. I know who I am. No mistakes were made in my creation. I was born to the father who was meant to raise me. I was born into a line of samurai, a line of heroes, a creature of honor. My father raised me to be a hero. I have never felt like I was meant to be anything else. I never have nor ever will question who I am. I am a superhero. It is my destiny, my calling. I have sworn by all my honor to myself and no one else to uphold what I know is just and right. I know I will die someday. All do. I accept that. When I leave this life and face my ancestors, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, the old samurai before them, and all those who went before me, back to the beginning of my line, I will stand before them with nothing except my honor. It is the only possession that I can take with me from this world. It is my duty to guard my honor, to nurture it and make it grow. Sacrifice and victory feed it. Cowardice and dishonesty poison it. I know who I am, and I will be who I am through all adversity. I will not waver from my course even unto death. I know who I am, and my honor anchors my resolve. First team was speechless. She knew her father and had never heard his reason for being a hero before. How were we expected to know this? Shogun spoke again. Connors knew you would not know a fitting answer. He wants you to search yourself and find one. I didn't know when he first asked me. He asked you this when you started with him? Yes, he did. Shogun became nostalgic. I remember the look on his face when I told him. Because I'm expected to be my father's son. He laughed at me. He laughed at me. That was the worst feeling in the world. I was insulted that anyone would laugh at me. Now I know why he did. It was a child's answer to a serious question. Whatever your answer is, he motioned to the alphas at the table. Whatever it is, the answer cannot come from anywhere but inside you. If your answer is because of anything outside of yourself, it can be taken away. Do you understand? If you were no longer expected to be your father's son, you would lose your reason for being a superhero? Darkspeed questioned back. Exactly. I suggest your team write out a list of reasons it can't be. This may help you with what it must be. Shogun rose from the table, signaling the end of their time together. I hope this helps you. She walked over to her father. Thank you for your help. Your wisdom has brought me closer to my own answer. Walk with me outside. We will only be a moment. Shogun said as they exited the room. Out of view of the other alphas, Shogun softened to his daughter. I know you call your mother more than me. She has more time to talk. I want to know, how are you? I'm very good. I'm first stealth. I'm thriving and my team is strong. Is this something you want to do for the rest of your life? Yes, I want nothing else. Then I'm happy you're at Alpha. I have a question. Of course, Shogun said. In all the time you spent teaching me how to fight, why didn't you teach me the way like you did just now? It's a very serious thing to think like that. You were serious enough. I just wanted you to enjoy being a little girl, to be happy. It's what all fathers want. She felt tears start in her eyes at her father's words. Even though he was in his armor, she hugged him close and tight. He was moved by her display and hugged back with closed eyes. Your team will need you to get back. Remember, most will expect greatness because you're my daughter. I expect you to be who you are and the greatness will follow. She didn't want the moment with her father to end, but knew her team had to go. We have to get back before we're missed. 
she said and re-entered the door to her teammates. Inside, Virtuoso was crying like a baby. Bioforce was rubbing her shoulders in an effort to comfort her. What's going on? she asked. Don't ask us. You went out there and Jilly had a meltdown, Olympian said. Only handles outside the dorm, Darkspeed said. I can't bring myself to call her by her superhero name while she's a basket case, Olympian stated. She looked at Virtuoso who made sad eye contact with her. She's eyes widened. Were you listening to our thoughts outside the door? She asked harshly. Virtuoso bawled and said, Yes, and it was beautiful. He loves you so much. She kept crying. That's it? Olympian said with shock. I thought billions of voices cried out in terror and were suddenly silent somewhere as their planet was destroyed. This is because she and her dad had a moment? Olympian's right. You need to stop so we can get back, Darkspeed said. No homework with the destroyed planet and maybe a fight, Olympian said under his breath. In front of the classroom building, first team assembled with the other teams. Coaches and teachers from all teams started showing up at 1620. All the teams huddled close together and did not mix with each other. Connor showed up and walked right to his team. Listen up. I'm not angry that you left campus. I just want to know if you plan on going off. Got it? Connor said. Darkspeed spoke for the team. We got it. How did you know we left? I track your vitals while on campus. Let's me know if you're hurt. How? Midas asked. He was, after all, familiar with the equipment on campus. Connor smiled and touched his earpiece. She shuddered, not thinking of it earlier. He has trackers on us, she thought. First team is now dismissed for the day. You now can attend your specialty classes. Olympian and Darkspeed, you're with me and Coach Spurs, Connor said. Coach Spurs used his outdoor voice to call the hitters out and quick. The coaches were still busy getting their groups together as the hitters walked off. Saber walked along with the hitters next to Darkspeed. You're working with the hitters today too? Darkspeed asked. Yes. Do you know where we're going? Saber asked. No. Your coach didn't tell you? My coach is letting us figure stuff out for ourselves. A lot. Saber grinned and nodded. I don't think ours knows what he's doing either. No, ours knows what he's doing. He's just not sharing it. The hitters class finally stopped behind the pit, between the pit and the firing range. As a hitter, your first and foremost task is to take the point position for the team. If something bad happens, you are the one it happens to. If someone gets hit with a death ray or a weapon of ultimate destruction, it will be you. That doesn't mean you're meant to be the sacrificial lamb on your team. Our job is to teach you how to fight smart. You knew when you came here you were going to be fighters. Now is your time to learn, Connor said. Connors and Spurs started doing some basic exercises and stretches with the hitters. Then, striking drills. Again and again, they repeated the moves. The coaches then broke the boys into smaller groups, having them work with each other on hand drills and footwork. This is like ultimate fighting with super strength, Darkspeed thought as he continued doing drills with Saber. Olympian was working with Anvil, who kept saying ouch whenever they touched. Olympian, you should not be hurting your training partner. Stop being so rough, Spurs said. I'm not. I'm just trying to move at a realistic speed. Lighten up or pay up. Spurs said sternly. Olympian did not test Spurs. He calmed down. Upon doing that, Spurs rewarded him with extra attention on his form. Olympian was impressed that Spurs knew so much more than him about hand-to-hand -hand combat. He decided to quickly pay attention and listen. Near the end of the class, the hitters were allowed to wrestle with each other. Matches were decided when one competitor tapped out. Olympian quickly dispatched each of the hitters. Spurs took off his cowboy hat and boots and gave Olympian a go. Spurs was nowhere near as strong as Olympian, but a much more skilled submission wrestler. Several times he was able to gain a hold or a lock on Olympian that should have ended the fight. Olympian's invulnerability proved the deciding factor. Olympian was then able to muscle his way into a good chokehold and Spurs was forced to tap. Undefeated! Olympian yelled as he stood from the match. Spurs was exhausted, lying on his back. Connors, take him to school! Olympian was quite high on his victory. He spun around and said, Come one, come all. Connors looked at the young man bouncing up and down in front of him. Have you ever faced anyone as strong as you? Not since I was much younger than my brothers. Spurs was putting on his boots and hat. Teach the boy some humility. Darkspeed thought maybe Olympian shouldn't be showing off so much. This may not be the way to endear yourself to your coach, Darkspeed thought. Think about what you're doing. Connors stepped in front of Olympian and assumed a relaxed posture. 
First move's yours, kid.